Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm. I'm Jay and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Hilltop Farm's Grand Meat Loaf. Okay, the first thing we need to do is this is uh, about 250 grams of sliced mushrooms. So first things first, we actually need to saute them. Those of you who may not know, we actually breed Papillon dogs. And we've got two of our adolescent puppy adult wannabes in the next room having a domestic over a toy. So please ignore them. Okay. So, we melt some butter in the pan. I mean, be quite generous. I see no merit in skimping. Now, add our mushrooms. And I just may add some more butter. Mushrooms love butter, but they soak it up like you wouldn't believe. Make sure this is melted, and then we saute our mushrooms. We want them lightly sautéed, we're, you know, we're, we're not trying to get them crispy or anything, we're um, literally just a light sauté. Now, if you've got fr fresh nutmeg, okay, I always like to give, give mushrooms a little bit of a scrape of um, fresh nutmeg. Not a lot, just a little. It just um, lifts them a little. Gives them a little something different. Okay, so they're looking absolutely lovely. They're lightly sauteed, they're softened looking lovely so turn off the heat spread them out a bit because you want them to cool um, they're going to go in with our, with our meat mixture now I'll tidy up and be back now I don't want any of you to be put off by what I'm about to say and, and switch the video off hear, hear me out and watch it out to the end because my impressions of meatloaf when I was younger was that they were cheap and nasty. They were full of grease and all it was was some cheap minced meat um, and breadcrumbs. Um, this one doesn't have breadcrumbs. This is a mixture of meats and by the time you're finished you're, you're talking about a, a loaf that's probably cost you 20 to 25 dollars in meat, um, but it weighs two and a half kilos or four pounds. Um, now for a family of four, once it's finished, once it's cooked, family of four you could easily cut it into four and wrap it back up and freeze it and if you reheat it covered up in foil it won't dry out and I know because I've done this. And you get four extremely nutritious, tasty meals at a good price. Alternatively, you can pay the whole lot um, for one meal, but it will serve a lot of people. You could entertain friends, um, and you could entertain a lot of friends. Uh, I've, I've even sort of had half of it entertaining a few friends, and the other half has been cut up for lunch meats. So, um, think about it, because although, as I say, your first impressions will be this is expensive to make, 
it's actually not when you feel when you think how much it makes and how far it will go okay what you need to start with 500 grams of pork chicken beef and sausage meat now it's obviously minced or ground or whatever you can have a combination of four of any different meats that you like um, the sausage is kind of mandatory because it's a bit sticky and helps bind it together but the other three you can have turkey lamb venison elk um, what, whatever takes your fancy you can you can have another thing that's mandatory and I don't want people to pull faces over is this chicken livers now I know a lot of people will go yuck it's revolting it's gross and all the rest of it in my experience most people that say that have never tasted it in their lives now it's not pleasant to have to handle but let's face it neither is raw chicken or raw anything for that matter um, you just have to take a deep breath and get through it so 250 grams or one pound um, of well not one pound sorry half a pound of chicken livers and you finally chop them up and believe me give it a go try it step outside the square when it's mixed through here and it's cooked it adds a beautiful flavor but you'll be hard pushed to even find any all right so our chicken livers they go in okay um, then we have one large onion okay that's all diced up in she goes whoops okay we have a good tablespoon of fresh thyme beautiful smells lovely now as much garlic as you like there's probably well, a couple of tablespoons there we love it but you know you can add more or less um, but put some in you want to be able to taste something okay now just wash my hands and I'll be back okay I'll pop that to one side I've got um, black pepper here a really really good pinch I think I better put this back where you can actually see it I suppose that would help wouldn't it so yes as I say a really good pinch of that okay then salt a couple of pinches of our good old Himalayan salt now you might think this is an un unusual one but it works allspice like that a good teaspoon sprinkle that over the top another one that you possibly never cooked with before juniper berries now it is most important when you are cooking with juniper berries that you crush them okay don't have to chop them up but you do have to crush them if you can imagine eating a piece of meat and picking out bits of lead bullet as you go which may have happened to some of you but that's what it will be like if you don't crush the juniper berries but juniper berries and allspice are very good with game meats or in this case mixtures of meats 
it helps bring all the flavors together so don't leave them out um, you may as well make one of those cheap rubbishy ones we have to bring back our mushrooms that have cooled and they go in along with the pan juices you don't want a morsel of that flavour to escape and last but not, not least an egg depending on the size of your eggs you may need two, this is a rather large one so I'm hoping you get away with one if by the time you get towards the end it's it, it just needs a bit more liquid um, you can add another one um, but I think this one's going to be alright with, with the one now I hate to tell you this it pays to have all the meats at room temperature or virtually at room temperature before you start because this can only be mixed by hand because if you try and mix it with anything else you won't get an even mixture you will be needing this for 15 minutes at least getting it squeezing it through your fingers to get it all amalgamated and if that makes you squeamish or you think it's disgusting or whatever then all you can do is just get on with it and I'll be back when it's all together now this is all blended together in one big mush so pop it there now you get a, a nice deep uh, oven oven tray okay and we're going to get it all out and onto that onto that tray okay now And you see what I mean about it being, you know, this, this is, we're talking about a, a substantial piece of meat here. This is not some, like I have seen in supermarkets, some revolting little concoction. It's in a little foil tray. Goodness knows what's in it. Okay, press it down gently. We're trying to get it to keep keep some sort of shape. All right, to about there. Now, bacon, lovely bacon. Now, what we're going to do here is tuck it in underneath and we're going to do a cross first okay tuck it underneath okay underneath okay got some lovely herbs here our fresh bay leaves we might line those up and a sprig of thyme ah, rosemary what am I saying okay now we'll go one from that corner and sit it there and one tucked under that corner and sit it there very much the style of the Union Jack very patriotic our dear Queen would love it okay so once we've got it all tucked in I've got all this lovely rosemary from the garden okay we'll 
tuck a, a couple of bits that way, you know, a couple of bits that way, a couple of bits this way. Now, there's multiple purposes for doing all this. The, believe it or not, the, the, the rosemary being stuffed down there stops it sprawling, which you don't want. You want it to basically be that shape. I know there will be a degree of shrinkage, but that's okay, as long as it shrinks in that shape. You don't want it an inch thick, like a big hamburger patty on the bottom. Okay, now, we drape, probably best to break them in the middle like that. Okay, and then they sit lovely. Draped over the top. Can you see? Looks like a hair in a hedge, doesn't it? Okay, with a little persuasion, we finally got that lid on. Now, if you don't have a lid to your pan, um, cover it with our foil or aluminum foil. Um, but don't do it tightly. Um, have it draped loose like a tent. Um, tuck it in, but have it loose over the top. Um, if you don't cover it, all, all that bacon will just dry up and shrivel up to nothing. Um, you don't want that to happen. Uh, now you cook this in an oven, uh, 350F to uh, 180C or gas 4. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to judge because you know, everyone's oven is different and each one person's the size of it will be slightly different. Um, treat it how you would a normal roast, um, but a roast uh, like a roast pork, something has to be cooked all the way through. This will probably go in our oven for around the two hour mark and we'll check it. Um, you want your, the liquid uh, running clear when you skewer it in the middle. And once you do that, bring it out of the oven and we'll take it from there. Okay, so are you ready for this? Have a look at that. Perfect. Two, uh, two hours to cook. As I thought. Now, we'll take some of this rosemary off the top. Leave that one there. Okay. Now, these ones sort of base the outside, couldn't you? Okay. Now, we have to lift it out of there. <laughs> I've done this many times, so I'm used to it. It is nerve-wracking and it is heavy. Okay, two, um, what do you call them? I don't actually know. I call them egg flippies. Anyway, one either end. Push them under. Lift it a little ways off the top to drain. And then Voila! Isn't that beautiful? Now, you can either take it to your table like that, or you can cut it down the middle, slice it all up, take it to your table slice like that. You could slice it all up um, if you're going somewhere, maybe there's a, you're putting on a buffet, or you're going somewhere where you have to take something and it's a buffet have it as cold meat equally lovely but you see what I mean you cut that into four pieces okay wrap it in aluminium foil or aluminum foil whatever they call it in the US and put it in the freezer reheat in the oven on low temperature wrapped in foil so it doesn't dry out and you've got yourself 
Four roasts for a family of four. And although, yes, it has cost you a lot of money for all that meat. Four m roast meals. Goes a long, long way. Also, the pan juices. Use it to make gravy. Obviously, take the um, rest of the rosemary out. Use it to make gravy. You can freeze it and use it in recipes um, that require um, a game stock. Don't often get called for it, but when you do, this can be used in place of game stock because it's very similar. Um, but if not, as I say, use it um, as a gravy base for anything that's gamey, beefy. Um, you can even use lamb because of the rosemary. Rosemary goes wonderfully well with lamb. Your imagination alone will limit you. Okay, so that's about it for today from Hilltop Farm. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Remember to hit the like button and share us on social media. And until next week, it's goodbye from Hilltop Farm. See ya!